My mom means the world to me. With me being the youngest of three children, after the divorce, she basically raised me by herself. Traveling a lot with my mom as I was growing up, I got to learn what she was really about. At work, she was very strong-willed, straight to the point, but at home, she was a loving mom and always understood when I needed that shoulder. She was a person that told you exactly how she felt, where she was coming from and what she expected out of you. And I think in return, she, you know, people loved her for that. Not only was she compassionate and loving towards me, but she never knew a stranger. When others needed her, she was always there for them. We found out in early May of 1990 that mom had a, a cancer uh, in her thyroid. Eileen had told the family that uh, cremation is what she wanted and uh, she was very, very firm in, in that choice. Uh, she was an advocate of cremation and uh, being a negotiator for the, the school board, uh, when, she, when she said it, she meant it. Mom told us that she didn't want to be a burden on us. She basically told us that she wanted to be uh, cremated and then scattered. She didn't want us to have to go to the cemeteries on memorial days and birthdays and special occasions to put flowers out there. She just didn't want us to do it. She even told us that she didn't want any service of any type at the funeral homes. She said, boys, don't spend any money at the funeral homes. You keep it and have a party on me. In the last days of mom's lives, we knew that it was getting close, and especially the last day. Uh, my brother and myself, were, we were there in the local hospice unit, uh, and, and mom died in our arms. We told her it was okay, mom, you can go, and at that point I closed her eyes with my hand, and uh, she took her last breath. I walked out of the room and I made one phone call to my friend Rich and at that point he says, don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Rich came over and we discussed all the, the choices that we had to make at that point, uh, whether it be a casket or direct cremation or uh, any other services available such as a, a memorial service, uh, a viewing or any of that and we told Rich, mom didn't want any of that. She wanted to be directly cremated and scattered. I felt as a funeral director the request that Blake's family had come to me with with an immediate cremation uh, deeply in my heart was, was not the right choice. Um, I felt that there is a, there's a need to memorialize their mom. When people found out that we weren't going to have any type of service for my mom, basically mom's friends kind of dictated to us, we're coming, we're either coming to a church, we're coming to a funeral home, or we're coming to your house. We don't care where we're coming, but we're coming to pay our respects to your mother. You're not going to shortchange us. We're coming. After the ceremony, I'm glad we went against my mom's wishes. We were really blown away with the amount of people that had turned out to show their respects to my mom. And at that point, we thought everything was done and over with, and we were going to move on with our lives. Six years into the process after my mother had died, I had my first son and I had nowhere to take my son to tell Grammy stories and things started to bother me. He started to realize then that I think he had kind of made a mistake with what they had done um, and not having an actual burial site or some place to actually go and visit with our child and to have some closure. I'm driving around town telling a, a good friend of mine how I'm feeling, a man-to-man -man conversation, and uh, he said, you know, that's kind of funny. Let me take you for a drive. So we went to uh, the local cemetery here in town. As we drove up, he made the comment, get out of the car. And he said, sit over there on that bench. See that bench right there underneath that shade tree? Go over there and sit down on that and tell me what you think. Now, when I sat down on the, on the bench, the hairs on my arms kind of rose, just like they did today. And he says, you felt that, didn't you? I said, I did. He said, that's my dad's love reaching up to you to tell you it's okay. What you're feeling, that's okay. 
And he says, you know what? That's what you need to do. You need to get a bench or something for your mom. I think the day when Blake came home and he had been at the cemetery with his friend, that he realized that having a memorial bench would be a place where we could go to actually sit and visit, leave flowers, you know, kind of a spot where we could take the children and say this is Grandma's bench. And um, to him that was a way that he found closure. October 1999, on a rainy Saturday morning, we had a dedication service for my mom's new bench, a memorial bench, a place for us to go and tell stories and just kind of reflect on things that she had done with us over the years. And we released seven white helium-filled balloons. The balloons signified one of each of the grandchildren, some mom never had seen. Well, when we released the balloons out over the highway, the biggest weight in my life was lifted off of my shoulders. I now had closure, I had a place to go to, I had a place to tell stories to my kids. Looking back on what I know now, Rich gave me what I asked for when really I wish he would have given me what I needed.